All right, today on the Halo Powerhouse, we're in the shop. We're talking crappy weather. We're talking block heaters, and we're gonna tell you why your breaker's tripping. Don't try this at home, guys. We are professionals. All right, welcome everybody today to this edition of the Halo Powerhouse. Today we got Toby Waterman. Toby is our uh, warehouse guy. We call him the Chaos Controller. So uh, welcome to the Powerhouse today, Toby. Thanks, Kev. Appreciate you having me on. All right, for sure. So today we got a little different video. We're talking about block heaters. It's winter time. The weather's crappy. I had to plug the truck in last night. You? Uh, I didn't have to plug my truck in yesterday, but I did have to dig it out. So. <laughs> There you go. So the weather is crappy and uh, we want to explain to you what's going on with the block heater on your vehicle, how it works, and why you might be finding that the breaker's tripping in your electrical panel. So I've got my beautiful old Jeep in here and Toby's going to take over and explain to you what the heck a block heater is and how it actually works. Over to you, my man. <laughs> what it is is basically a block heater is something that uh, heats up your block so it gets the oils and the fluids inside your vehicle flowing so it can get uh, get the motor and whatnot running. So basically there's a there's an element inside the motor that is what you're plugging your the front of your car into as you can see here and that's what gets the electric uh, heater uh, block going. So. Awesome. Let's open up the hood here Toby. So we got a cord here. This is mostly what most people see when they plug in the vehicle, they got this cord, but where does it go? Well, like I said, it basically goes right into the uh, into your into your motor. Now, unfortunately, this one, we can't really see it very well because if we follow this one all the way to the back here, this one goes all the way into the back of the motor, right, right in the back down here. So whether or not you can see that or not, but uh, unfortunately, because we can't get, a, get back there without jacking the truck up, which is what we're not gonna do right <laughs> now, but uh, like I said, it's basically a heating element that's uh, attached to the motor, uh, well, side of the block of the motor, and it just heats up the oil so that it gets everything circulating, heats up the coolant uh, so that you can, it lubricates all of the parts and uh, keeps the heat uh, from the motor uh, transferred into the, into the cab, so. So yeah, what I know about block heaters is basically it's on the sides of your engines, there's these things called frost plugs. That's right. And uh, they're designed that if the antifreeze ever, if the coolant freezes up in your engine, it'll actually push and push the frost plug out so it doesn't crack the engine block. So the heating element pops into the side of the engine where one of the frost plugs would be, yes. and it sits right in the antifreeze. So yeah, it just keeps that engine nice and warm. And you're right, it transfers that heat back to the oil and all through the engine. I know sometimes I can have the, the uh, block heater plugged in and part of the snow was actually melted on my windshield even though I don't have the heater on. So, so that heat's transferring all the way up. Okay, so we plugged it in. Yep, as we can see, I can't, unfortunately again, we can't really hear the, uh, the heater core going from the back here, but I'm sure it's running, so it's up. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people don't realize how much power a block heater actually draws. You know, they just plug it into their outlet and it works. Yeah, that's but, it. Well, what can happen? I mean, if I've got three vehicles plugged in. Well, when you're starting to plug in three vehicles all on the same circuit, you're you're taking all the amperage draw from every one of those vehicles, and that's gonna that could potentially overload the circuit. You got and it. Depending on what's on there. Yeah. So what I've got is I've got my amp meter here, and uh, we're gonna actually show you how much power this block heater draws, and we've got this specialty made cable. Yeah. Don't try this at home, kids. We are professionals. So what we're gonna do is take an amp reading on the block here and show that it is working. Okay, there you go. So the block heater on my Jeep draws 4.3 amps. Now here's the thing. You got a 15 amp circuit <clears throat> for your outside plugs. Now these outside circuits are designed to trip at about 80%. So, you know, once you get up past 12, 13 amps, you're at risk of tripping that breaker. So, you know, four and a half amps on this, we plug two vehicles in, we're up to nine. 
That's right. Plug in one more. Yep, overload the circuit. Good chance, especially if you've got your Christmas lights plugged in already. Ooh. And now you plug in a couple of vehicles. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's really it. That's one thing that I think uh, homeowners need to know about plugging in their vehicles is you may need to actually run a cord from another circuit in your home. For okay. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Toby, I picked up this extension cord at Home Depot. This is all you need, right? Absolutely not. What do you mean? Well, first off, if you just look right at the, uh, right at the labeling there, uh -huh. indoor rated only. That doesn't matter. Absolutely does matter. <laughs> okay. If you, if you start putting this stuff outside in the cold and it gets down below, say, probably minus 10 is probably as, probably as early as or low that you can get at that. If you start freezing that cord, which has no insulation on the inside of it, and then somebody picks it up and then bends the cord, you have a risk of breaking the conductors on the inside of that, and then your cord is no good for anything. And someone could get lit up off that. Absolutely. Okay. If you're not treating it with the utmost care and respect. Okay, so when I'm going to uh, the big box store to buy a cord for my block heater, what should I be looking for? Uh, ideally, what you want to be looking for is a, probably a 14 gauge, probably to be on the safe side, say with a 12 gauge three conductor. So two prongs and uh, a ground is so three prong extension cord on the end. So uh, it's the safest, most common that you're going to find. Uh, most of the labels will say indoor, outdoor rated, but if it just says just plain old outdoor, it's absolutely fine for obviously if you're using indoors as well. So okay, and I mean we've got a 12 gauge. We do. <clears throat> bright orange cord yeah, um absolutely yeah so again just a uh this is the wrong end of it here but basically what we were talking about is two prongs and then a ground so you can almost look at it as the ex the happy face with the mouth open so <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know what that emoji is called <laughs> <laughs> i don't, I don't the know gasp, either the gasp face the, How was that that's the Right. Yeah, yeah that'll there we go. use the gas space. <laughs> this cord's nice too because it lights up on the end. Yeah, so absolutely. Like, so you'll always know when the other end is plugged in. So if you can see the lights on here, that's that's just a nice feature. Not a necessity, but it definitely definitely helps to know that you've got some power going through the cord at the very least. So. Right. Now, most people are going to have a GFI receptacle on the outside of their home. And that's where they're going to plug their extension cord into. Um, We've actually had service calls in the past where people have called and said, oh, there's something wrong with my outdoor plug. But it was actually a problem with the block heater. Because let's remember, GFI plugs are designed to trip, uh, say you've got a, a situation where there's water present. What can happen on your block heater element is it'll actually get little pinholes in it over time. Some of that antifreeze can get into the element and it'll actually cause the element to short out might not actually trip the breaker, but it could trip the GFI. So if you've got a GFI plug on the outside of your home that's tripping, every time you plug in the block heater, it's a good chance you've either got a problem with your cord, maybe you got a crappy cord, maybe you use an outdoor cord, but you could even have trouble with the actual heating element in your block heater. And that's something you have to take into the shop and get repaired. All right, Toby, so Let's say I'm that guy that forgot to unplug the cord and a back through to my driveway and it tore the cord end off my cord. Am I out of luck? What, what, what can I do? Well, first I would give in your license because you shouldn't be doing that. So we'll that. wait till you do it and then I'll remember that. No yeah. problem, absolutely. Okay, so. But uh, yeah, first off, uh, if, you, if that happens, I mean, obviously the easiest solution is to get another cord end and then just cut that one off and, and rewire this in. But, Probably the safest idea is if that doesn't doesn't work for you, take it into your shop, get uh, get the mechanics out there to have a look at it, make sure that there's nothing torn at the other end of the uh, the cable. So good advice, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, there you go. Well, I think uh, I think we've covered about everything a guy needs to know about block heaters. So thanks for joining us today, Toby. Thanks for all the uh, the wonderful wisdom on the world. wonderful world of block heaters. Okay, Kevin, one of the things you didn't, didn't uh, let all your viewers know is to hit that subscribe button and like our videos. Absolutely. Thank you, Toby. Hit the subscribe button. You want to find out what we're up to on the Halo Powerhouse every week. Lots of great info there, so please subscribe, comment, throw us those likes. Hopefully no dislikes, but that's okay. We love to hear it all. And see us on Google. That's right. Halopower.ca.
Right on. Until right. next time, I'm Kevin Stay, Halo Power Solutions. And I'm Toby Waterman. Chaos Controller. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.